Heads, welcome back to BZB TV. This is Nate back here from the tech support team. And today we're going to be doing a series. This is going to be part one of our series of our, our full multi-camera live stream series of between HD and 4K uh, solutions. Uh, so today we're going to be doing the HD 1080p solution for different live streaming environments, maybe like a church, studio, a conference room. We have multiple cameras and you want to control them with the joystick and you want a multi-viewer as well as you want a network. So um, yeah, just if you want that quality, um, not quite need that 4K yet, but you have the HD quality, which is still a really good quality. Um, and depending on budget and where things are at, uh, this is going to be a great solution. So today we're just going to do a full walkthrough uh, from start to finish setup. Uh, we, we have two of our cameras here, our BG Commander joystick, as well as our HDVSU 42U um, HDMI video switcher, as well as um, as one of our uh, sw uh, PoE switches. And so, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and go over the setup and then we'll dive in. So first thing we want to do is power on everything. As you can see, we have everything powered on, but I'm just going to co go over how everything was powered on. All of, um, all of our cameras and our joystick, they're PoE, power or ethernet. So as you can see, we have our two cameras here, our BG UPTZ camera, as well as our BG VPTZ camera. Uh, these are both great uh, HD uh, cameras there. And they're both, these, like I said, these support PoE. So they're actually powered on by this PoE eight port network switch that we offer as well. Um, so I just had them both plugged in uh, with ethernet cables. As you can see, the runs are not too far, uh, but it's great is, you know, if you're running ethernet, you can go over hundred, I mean, excuse me, you can go over 330 feet. If you have your cameras networked um, and are mounted up in corners, whatever it may be, you can uh, power it on and no need for additional power supply there. So I got them powered on through that as well as the joystick. I, as you can see in the back of the joystick here, just one cable plugged into our PoE switch. It is networked as well as powered on. Um, for our video switcher, this one is not PoE, but it just takes a 12 volt, 12 volt power supply. So we're able to plug that in. So that's power as well as connections. So we're using for this one, we're using HDMI cables because uh, this is the video production switcher uh, is an H or one of our HDMI ones. Uh, we also have an SDI one, but today we're using our HDMI one. So I have an HDMI going out of this camera, uh, HDMI going out of this camera, and I just have them HDMI one and then two, uh, just the video out because this uh, this video switcher uh, supports up to 1080p at 60. Um, so this will not support 4K, uh, but this is just supports. This is great for these cameras at the HD quality. And then as you can see behind me, I actually have the HDMI multi view out. As you can see, we can see our cameras here. Um, this is great for uh, your multi camera setup, so you can see both of your cameras. Um, so. Now that we got a, the, we got them powered on, and then we have the video feed coming out. Now let's go ahead and get a network because we want to control these cameras as well. Actually, before we dive in, just going over the network setup part of things. Um, so as you can see, the cameras are powered through the PoE switch. This also provides network connectivity. Um, so our PoE switch is actually getting fed from our local router so it can provide an IP address. And so it's all on our local um, IP scheme here so we can have everything on our local network. So we have our cameras plugged into it, our joystick, and also I have my computer plugged directly into the same switch as well so I can talk to the cameras. Actually tur turn the Wi-Fi off of my computer just to make sure uh, there's no conflict with Wi-Fi if you have VLANs going or anything else. I know for sure that I'm going directly to the same exact switch that my cameras and joystick is and so I can start networking that. So just want to go over that. And so first thing we want to do is if you don't know what your local IP is, because what we're going to do is log into the default of these cameras and um, and change it to an IP scheme that it's on our local network. But if you don't know where it's at, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and dive in on here. I'm going to right click my Internet settings, right click my Ethernet icon, go to open network Internet settings. Um, I'm going to go to change adapter options here. And so you're going to go ahead and right click your ethernet. That's our connection. Go to head of status. Oh yeah, that's where I got. Um, go to details. And first you want to find your IP4 address. That is right here. Ours is 192.168.40.104. Um, and our gateway is 192.168.40.1. So that's the address we're going to match once we get into the, once we get into the, Sorry, once we get into the cameras, we're going to match that. Um, you just want to match the subnet of 192.168.40 um, to assign to the camera. So 
You might want to write that down of your own address. It might be 192.168.5. something or 10.0.10.0. Might be something else. Uh, just depends on your local area network. This just happens to be our network. So I'm going to go back a couple steps, and then now I'm going to right click it. Now I'm going to go to properties, and then I'm going to go ahead and double click Internet Protocol version four, and then I'm going to do use the following IP address. So because I'm going to statically assign an IP address to uh, talk to the camera. So first we're gonna log into the BGUPDZ. The default IP address is 192.168.5. That's the subnet and the uh, address of the camera is 163s. So um, I'm gonna put an address on here that matches that 192.168.5. And for example, we're gonna make this computer temporarily 200. And then default gateway is 192.168.5.1. And the subnet mask, if you hit tab, that will just usually fill in for you. And 255.255.255.0 is correct. So I'm gonna hit OK. I'm gonna hit OK again. Make sure you close those two windows. It's gonna say identifying. That's fine. It's, if you're, it's gonna kick you off the internet. That's totally fine. We have Chrome that I'm using. I'm gonna go ahead and put the default in, 192.168.5.163. Hit enter, and boom, login page pops up. And pa username and password are both lowercase admin, admin, admin. And there we go, here is our camera in our room. All right, so real quick, um, we're gonna now put this on our local network, so configuration on that and on the left side of your configurations you're going to see under network configure you're going to see ethernet you can see the default right there subnet mass and default gateway is not filled in yet so i'm going to do something i'm going to match my local network because remember this computer was 192.168.40 i'm going to do this I'm going to, and then i'm going to make the updz let's do 161 you can leave the subnet mass the same default gateway i'm going to match my local you want to match your uh, default gateway of your router, um, which is dot one dot forty. Remember, we got that number earlier. I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to go ahead and reboot the camera. So the bottom left, you'll see reboot, and give you a little prompt to reboot. Go ahead and reboot. And say yes, yes, and the camera. Give it a second, it will do his little uh, self-check restart dance. Um, so that's going right now. So while that one's going, I, I'm actually going to jump over in. Um, network uh, the VBDZ now and this one has a different default of they have a, it has a default of 192.168.1.162 and this one was dot five dot one six three dot one dot one six two so I'm gonna go back to my Ethernet uh, connection here I'm go back and right click to properties go ahead and double click pro in our pro internet protocol version four and all I have to do is to talk to that camera it just change this third bracket here because dot five um, was for the UPDZ for the v, since the VPDZ is on a dot one the one nine two one six eight dot one. I'm gonna all I have to do is change the ones. Let me change the five to ones. Hit OK. Hit OK. And that's doing its thing. So I'm gonna open up another tab and one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one six two. Hit enter and. Boom, pops up the login page for our VPTZ, which is, you can see it's gonna be a little different, um, just different cameras. And there you go, you can see we're painting in the room here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and network this one as well. So go ahead and click on config, go to network, and then you can see the current IP address. So I'll, honestly, all I'm gonna do is change these ones to 40s because that is our network here. And I'm gonna keep that 162. That's, I know that address is not in use on this local network. You can leave the DNS, that's fine. Go ahead and hit save. It's gonna say start the jump, um, but that's if you have multiple addresses going. Um, so I still have to restart the camera to get it to talk. So, um, so it already kicked me off for this. Um, so you actually have to just power cycle it yourself. And I just used to power cycle it by unplugging it and plugging it back in just with the PoE. So that's restarting now. As you can see, uh, the page went away, which is totally fine. So while that camera is restarting, I'm gonna go ahead and put my computer back on to our local network because we're still statically assigned to um, a different network. So go back to the protocol version four. All I gotta do is reselect the bubble, obtain IP address automatically, and DNS as well. Hit okay, 
hit OK. Make sure you close those two windows. We're back on our local. And now, make sure you write down the IP addresses you change the cameras to. Don't want to lose that. So I'm going to go ahead and lock, relock it just to double check that the UPDZ is good. .40.1, it was 161. And boom, back in. Admin, admin, and now this is on our local network. And then this is actually on 40.162. I'm just going to refresh this page because that already popped up for me. And this is our second camera. All right, both cameras are now on our local network and we can stay on the internet. If you're live streaming everything, it's always good to keep everything on the same network um, so you can easily talk to the cameras if you need to. Um, so that's how you network, network both of our, the UPDZ and the VPDZ. Next thing we wanna do is get it talking to our joystick. So this is actually really easy. Um, so as you can see, the joystick is plugged into our, our PoE switch. And so all we're gonna do is just turn the DHCP on this joystick so it'll automatically get assigned an IP address from our local network. Um, the reason we didn't do it on the cameras because uh, you can easily lose that IP address and re restart. You don't know what it's gonna be. And um, like the IP address will always display on this. Um, but for these guys, uh, we always recommend keep it at static and you know it's, once you set the IP address, you know it's not gonna change if you plug it anywhere else. You always know where, what it's at. Um, so on the joystick all powered up. So here, we're just gonna go hit setup, kind of the top left. You're gonna toggle down to option number four. And then number four, network attribute. You're gonna to toggle to the right, because right now it says static. We're gonna change that to DHCP. Hit enter twice at the bottom right corner, and it'll restart, and this will pull, once it restarts, it'll pull a local address from your local router. Okay, so now that the joystick restarted, uh, you can see at the very top, it says native IP. Uh, it pulled a local address. It's 192.168.40.122. As you can see, the, the local is 192.168.5.180. Um, but now it's on .40, which is great. So easiest way to network the cameras to this joystick is using the web GUI of this joystick. You can do it through here. We actually have another video on how to do that, but uh, I really like using the web GUI. So I'm gonna take that native IP and go ahead and put it in my web browser. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into, uh, our, go back to our web browser. I'm gonna put the native IP is 192.168.40 and then yeah, 122 and it should pop in the login page. And for this one, it's username, is admin, and actually this one you leave the password a blank. Go ahead and hit login. And this is where you can add your cameras. You can also do some multiple other settings here. Um, you can see the camera is on DHCP, I mean the joystick, um, but we're gonna keep it like that because um, I like it that way. <laughs> um, so we're gonna add in our first camera, which is our UPDZ. So just go to this little pencil under operate and it's actually really easy. Uh, protocol is Visca. We recommend Visca protocol as some other ones. Visca, I mean, on, on VIF, on VIF, Sony, Visca, TCP, but Visca UDP is a really good a network port that we, um, we like to use, it works great with our cameras. So we know the IP address of this camera is 192.168.40.161. And the port, this is the Visca port number, 1259. Um, and that can be found in, um, if you go into the configurations of the UPDZ on the web GUI and you go to network port, you can see it's right here, port Visca. You're using that port, the number is right there. Uh, don't want to change that. You want to keep that consistent. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Say successful. And before I go back to the joystick, I'm going to add our second camera as well. And so I'm going to add in our VPDZ. Um, same protocol, Visca UDP is great. IP address 192.168.40.162. And this port number is actually going to be different. So if you, I'm going to go to um, the web GUI of the VPDZ. And if you go to config, you go to network, and you go to service, you'll see the Visca port is 52381 right there. That's the number that you want. 52381. Go ahead and hit save. And both cameras are now added. And all you have to do on the joystick, it says, please reconnect the device. All you gotta do is hit whatever cam button you're gonna use. So cam one, I'm just gonna hit that button. And now it's connected. As you can see, it's moving around really easily. Up, down, there's a thing. And 
and the commander can do uh, up to 10 presets on here and uh, a lot of options on here. We actually have another video on that. And then also, so cam two now is the VPDZ and this one is networked as well. And there we go, right, left, up, down. And as you can see behind me, you can see the camera moving on our multi-viewer. So now that we got our cameras networked, we got our cameras talking to our joystick. Now, as you can see, um, we just have our video switcher. This is great. Um, because this is for control, this is for the video out. Only, this is only for controlling the cameras, left and right, panning, presets and everything. This is controlling for your production, uh, which camera that you wanna, um, showing up in, um, if you have multiple cameras, you got your main camera and then your preview camera or your recording camera. And so as you can see just on here, you got this can do up to four, a lot of options on here. And um, you can actually download control software for this as well. Um, but you can see, we have our four windows. Right now we just have two cameras, but we have a four. You can see all your four uh, cameras if you have up to, if you have four cameras that you're using. You got your preview uh, camera if you wanna queue that up. And then also you got your program camera. And um, and the switching was really easy. You can easily do the, uh, the slider bar, which is switches between program and whatever camera you have up in preview. You got cut, which is a quick cut or auto. And you can do, you're gonna change some, uh, the transitions here. If I wanna do like a mix, if I wanna do a wipe, um, do a dip. Uh, so there's just there's some basic settings there. Um, and then the question is, how do I get this into my computer? A great question. Uh, so this actually acts as a capture device. There's a USB-C out. And so you're gonna take that USB-C out. This comes with that cable, go directly USB-A to your computer um, and just open it up as a, like you're adding like a webcam. It'll take whatever cameras in your, whatever cameras in your program will be the one that'll be um, showing up in the computer. So if I hit, if I switch, switch between the two uh, cameras there, it's, I'll be switching on your computer as well. Uh, really easy connection, um, but you can do all your switching there. Like if you're using OBS Studio, you don't have to do the switching in there. It'll automatically, is seamless switching on your computer. Um, so I know it went over a lot today. Uh, so from cameras to joystick to networking to switching, um, I know it seems like a lot, a lot of cables, uh, but just take it really slow. Um, it's actually pretty simple once you have everything just slowly um, plugged in. Uh, what I love is everything that comes PoE, less cables. Um, as you can see, we don't have as many cables here because you can power and network the cameras as well. And so it's great for setup. And so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. As I mentioned, this is part one of our part uh, two part series of HD versus uh, 4K setup. This is for great, like I, like I mentioned, for like a church setup or a studio recording, anything you're live streaming from maybe like a conference room and get your multi-camera, you got multi-cameras, uh, joystick to control them as well as a multi-viewer, or excuse me, a multi-view out of it, a production switcher to view all your cameras. Uh, PoE switch to power everything on so everything is works together very nicely. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to uh, videos like these so you'll be notified when the next video comes out when we do our 4K uh, video solution there of from setup for multi-camera multi setups, uh, live streaming solutions. Also, don't forget, you can always leave a comment or question below. Love to hear from you. Love to hear uh, what you guys are thinking, what kind of questions you might have, how we can help with your uh, environment, what kind of solutions we can provide for you. And uh, as always, have a great day.